The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Cut on that. <laughs> well then, no pun intended, this week on the Pope on Film, yes. truly, truly, an historic week for the show. Yes. One yes, for the history books. Yes. A monumentous occasion here on the podcast. Truly. <laughs> when they write the history books about the year that was 2017, the top stories will be President Trump's impeachment, Bill Cosby's sad, sad death, Yes. And episode 123 of The Pope on film. I cannot radically oversell this week's episode over dramatically enough, my friends. <laughs> but. Yes. But let's put a pin on that because I would like, if I may, mm -hmm. to go back really quick to something we were talking about in the beginning of the show. Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yes. Okay. Now, I love mystery science theater and my love of mystery science theater goes back way back a long long way i had most of the rhino home video videotapes yeah um, i i remember when people were actually circulating the tapes yeah on uh usenet ah <laughs> like yeah. alt.ms3 <laughs> And they were. Those were the people who were actually circulating the tapes. I never actually got more involved in that. Yeah. But that's where I found out about all the original episodes and stuff. Yeah. So I had most of the videotapes. I saw most of the episodes new on Comedy Central. Yeah. I remember... Uh, the first time that I missed a class on purpose, the first time I played hooky from college yeah, was my uh, second semester of, of college. I had a test that I missed because they were playing Bride of the Monster. <laughs> the Bride of the Monster Mystery Science Theater episode on Comedy Central, and I had priorities even then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I commend you. Thank for, you. Yeah. I even had a trace. Bell Just, let me ask you this question. OK. Yes. Yes. Which has gotten you further in life? College or MST3K? Oh, absolutely. Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. Absolutely. Mystery Science Theater. Although I did take some pretty pointless classes that helped me out. Like, yeah. uh, my bowling class really did help me out a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really did help me out a lot. I'm a much better bowler. Um, I even had Trace Bellew's autograph for a while until I burned it in an argument with my asshole brother that I don't want to relive right now. The point <laughs> is, the point is, I've always loved Mystery Science Theater, but... There is one thing, one small aspect of Mystery Science Theater 3000, one small plot point within the show itself that I never liked, that I always questioned, and that is the basic basic concept of, hey, I've kidnapped this guy and I'm going to drive him insane. How? By showing him bad movies. I always thought that, yeah, it's a cute idea. Yes. And yeah, there's a lot of bad movies out there, but no bad movie However bad it may be, no movie is so bad that it would drive a man insane. No. Like, it, it, not Manos, not uh, Beast of Yucca Flats. Mm -hmm. Fly on the moon. Where did it come from? But again, it is a, it is a popular movie trope. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, the movie that if you watch it kills you. You know, yeah, that's been done a few times or variations. You watch this movie, it releases demons or whatever. So a as a premise, I can deal with it. Yeah, but how but 
However, however, yes. By the forty-five minute mark of this week's movie, I literally started screaming. <laughs> and I was just screaming as loud as I could. I wasn't even. I wasn't screaming anything in particular. I wasn't yelling any words. It was just sort of a primal, angry, frightened wail. Yes. You know, I wasn't really saying anything in particular and yet deep down inside if you could translate my angry frightened wail i basically what i would be saying is please for the love of god for the love of gods for the love of all the gods please just yes. stop this fucking movie this yes. goddamn fucking movie why are you so long over two hours long just please fucking stop <laughs> And that, lords and ladies and gender rebels, brings us full circle to the historic, monumental aspect of this week's episode. For you see, this week's episode of the Pope on Film will be our first and last <laughs> Adam Sandler movie we ever cover. Yes. Thank, here, here. Thank freaking Wood. Yes, I, I would have had to have I would have had to have gone on strike. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's the 2017 marathon of bad life choices. Adam Sandler's new Netflix film, Sandy Wexler, and I'm half tempted to just end the episode right here by spinal tapping the review and just give it a two word review that just says shit sandwich. Yes, <laughs> but I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. And I am going to carry on. Small aside, next week we should totally do Spinal Tap. Yes. It's the same reason why we do, like, Cannibal Holocaust, and then after that we do Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, or, or uh, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Like, yes. we're going to see the kids' movie after the hideous movie to sort of cleanse the palate. This is a horrible fucking comedy, so we need to see a good comedy. Yes. To kind of cleanse the the like the filth. This movie is basically the cinematic equivalent of Conus two thousand two. Yes, because which makes some very good choices to go together. Yeah, yeah. But to actually watch them together is is fucking suicide fuel. Yeah. Because like Conus two thousand two, I imagine that every frame of this film is coated in a small film of mucus. Yes. Of mucus and sweat and jizz. Yes. Because he seems like a pretty dirty individual, and this film is just a hideous, hideous monstrosity. So I think that a good comedy would cleanse this comedy. So I think the next and the, week... And the cameos. Jesus. Oh, my God. It, don't ever, don't fucking ever, any of you within the sound of my voice put goddamn Vanilla Ice and Paulie Shore in the same fucking movie. Jesus fucking Christ. I, 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 and then it got worse. Much, much worse. Yeah. I feel, I feel bad for Terry Crews. Terry Crews deserves more than this film. He was the only one I felt bad for. Everyone else can suck it. Everybody what? like like I have never seen such a collection of fucking has-beens in my life. The one thing that I really like about this film is that a lot of the a lot of the people that they interview, the testimonials that they get, a lot of the people that they interview about Sandy Wexler yeah. really honestly literally do seem like they would do anything to not be there. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that Janine Garofalo is just, okay, so when I say these lines, I can leave, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to say them as quickly as possible. Here's the lines. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm getting in my Jeep and getting the fuck off this set. <laughs> because fuck this. Like, I'm pretty sure that 
that Conan O'Brien was literally going to just grab Norm from Cheers and throw him at the camera. Yeah. So that would cause a distraction that would allow him to run out of the run out of the tent. <laughs> that's how that's how desperate he was to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Now, now I it's real easy and and dare I say even trendy to shit all over the films of Adam Sandler. So I would like to start yeah. the discussion. I would like to start the discussion by saying something positive about this week's movie. Well, and I would also like to remind everybody, okay? I defend Batman and Robin. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I defend Batman and Robin. I defend Rock of Ages. Okay? I champion I, I these Rock movies. So so yeah. I'm not trendy, okay? Yeah, yeah. I did have a prejudice going into the movie, but I was willing to give it a try. Yeah, you know, I heard give Adam it. Sandler a chance. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I would like to start off the discussion of this film by talking about positives from this week's film. Okay. It's over. It's over. Unfortunately, <laughs> there is literally nothing good about this goddamn movie at all. Nothing. No oh. thing. So I've got nothing positive to say about this film except, here you go, the soldiers' costumes were very realistic. That's positive. Yes. Rave of the century. Well, hey, I've seen worse reviews. I've seen reviews where they didn't even mention the costumes. Right. Like, Last Francis the Mule picture. It got terrible notices. Huge hit. Lines around the block. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you something, uh, Water. Let me tell you something, Water. Yes. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier in the podcast, but your new name is Water. Okay. Okay. Your new nickname is Water. Let me explain it for you. All right. Uh, your name is Bunny. And when I think of bunnies... Okay. I think of water shit down. Oh. And so I just shortened that. So your name is water now, or maybe agua if I'm feeling very uh, three caballeros that day. Okay. Might call you agua. Fair or enough. Might, might just call you water. Also, I came up with that new slightly convoluted nickname because I am desperate to talk about anything other than fucking Adam Sandler movies. I... I... The second he appeared on screen, my first thought was, you going to fucking talk like that through the whole movie? No, he can't possibly do that. He cannot talk like that through the whole movie. I was kind of hoping that he turned out to be like a con man, you know? Yeah. And that was like his con man shtick. You know, motherfucking Adam Sandler, you were not nearly anywhere related to cool enough to be doing a cheeky Hollywood insider movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's you actually douchebag. It's actually based on his real life manager Sandy Wernick. Huh. So it's a labor of love and a Salute to the golden age of Hollywood and fucking yada yada yada. Yeah, no, it was a crapper, a shit sandwich. Yeah, yeah, shit sandwich. <laughs> oh my so, god. So, agua. Yes. Let me tell you something here. Water. Yes. Let me just be very direct about this. I apologize. <laughs> okay. I sincerely and humbly and some third word apologize for picking this revolting maggot filled crack whore of a goddamn fucking film. That's all on me. Yes. And I'm up to it. And I apologize. Yes. I had no idea that this film was going to be an, an excruciating marathon two hours and ten minutes long. It's a marathon of bad choices and that fucking Nick Swarsden guy. 
basically, this film is the Batman v Superman of comedies. Yes. It's yes, it is. It's full of bad choices and poor characterization, and it's also some third thing, because comedy comes in threes. Well, I, I was also posting on Facebook as I was watching it, and, and, and I would like to share some of that here. Yes, yes. First off, Adam Sandler is so bad he should be in Trump's cabinet. Oh, yeah. He could be the secretary of comedy. And Sandy Wexler himself? He is so bad, he should be on Suicide Squad. Oh, God. 45 in minutes into the movie, I had to put out an Amber Alert for the fucking plot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was not a good experience. <laughs> it's... I would watch Yugi Loves again with a double feature with Manos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Yes. Uh, this film is shit. Yes. Big shit. And yet I picked the film because the small handful of reviews that I skimmed through said things like, this film is okay. <laughs> this film is not that bad. And this is this is actually a review that I read. Definitely not the worst Netflix Adam Sandler movie he has done. Oh, I don't even want to see that fucking movie, whatever they're talking about. <laughs> this is his third movie with Netflix. He did The Ridiculous Six in 2015, and he did The yeah. Duo in 2016. Oh, yeah. So if this is definitely not the worst Netflix film... I will most definitely never watch The Ridiculous Six for as long as I fucking live. Ever. There's only... Yeah. There's, yeah, there's only one reason to watch The Ridiculous Six, and that is to revel fiendishly at just how far Twilight hunk Taylor Lautner has fallen. <laughs> I if, if Ridiculous Six is worse than this movie... We should take Ridic Ridiculous Six, package it up, send it to North Korea. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm hmm. It's a great idea. Like, the, for a while there, I was really hoping that Taylor Lautner, because for a while, Taylor Lautner became famous and he, he hosted Saturday Night Live. And the main reason why he was famous was that he, yeah, he was, a, he was shirtless in Twilight, but also primarily. He was at the time dating Taylor Swift. Okay. And Taylor Swift was getting really popular. And I was hoping to God, I was fucking praying that they would get married. Really? Yeah. You know why? Why? They would both be named Taylor Lautner. Oh. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Taylor Swift would take Taylor Lautner's last name, so it would be Mr. and Mrs. Taylor Lautner. Literally, they would both be Taylor Lautner. That's that's creepy. Yeah, that's that's like invasion of the. Then they separate, and then they each marry somebody else named Taylor, and there are four of them. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. That's how that's how you spread it. Taylor, yeah. Taylor Lautner is a disease. Well, I have said on this show before that I am I am like ninety nine percent sure that Taylor Swift is an alien human hybrid. Yes, because yeah. she's just too perfect, and like yeah. not perfect in a good way. From cause, well, because she frightens me. Yeah, you know, in in that in that everything is just too exact like a barbie doll or that old science fiction movie looker you know yeah. yeah and yet and yet taylor swift is the same age as adele really yeah they're the same age so how is it that adele is a is a smart grown woman 
who has who has already had a great career and Taylor Swift is still like an emotionally stunted <laughs> 19 year old brat. Like, how is that possible? Like, I realized just a couple of days ago that I'm the same age as John Oliver. Really? Yeah. No, I am the same age as John Oliver and John Cena. Oh, yes. You and posted I'm something like that. that. How am I the same age? Like, okay, I might not look younger than John Cena because he's just chiseled. Yes. Marble. But God damn it, I do look younger than fucking John Oliver. Yeah. I definitely look younger than that man because that man does not look like he's the same age as me. So I'm kind well, of. Well, John Oliver is one of those interesting kind of case studies. Okay? Because John Oliver went from 16 to 40 yes. overnight. There was no in between for John Oliver. Nope, nope, nope. Agreed. Oh my God, I just realized something. Holy shit, I gotta do this right now. I gotta do this right now. Okay. I'm, I'm so excited that I can finally uh, undownload Sandy Wexler from my phone. Ah. Oh. Because when it comes to Netflix movies, there, when it comes to Netflix, there are certain films that you can now, if you have a mobile device, you can download movies and TV shows onto your mobile device from Netflix so you can watch them whenever you want when you don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I just said, you know what? We're doing Sandy Wexler next week. I'm going to download it onto my phone and just watch it throughout the week on my phone when I don't have the internet. This will be fun. No, it was not fun. I, it was not fun. I am thinking that when I post this episode in the comments, which I usually just put our links in there, in the comments I'll, <laughs> I'll post don't listen to this episode. This movie is fucking horrible. <laughs> it is. It's fucking it's goddamn atrocious. Stay away. I, yeah. I do believe that even that even we now are radioactive because we watched that movie. Yeah. Yeah. We may have to be quarantined. Possibly. Possibly. Fucking Sandy fucking Wexler. Fucking goddamn Sandy fucking Wexler. And, and, and did you find yourself like about halfway through the movie, you're watching the movie and just hating and like gnashing your teeth? And your mind just wandered off, tried to escape, actually, and start thinking, you know, maybe the first hundred days weren't really all that bad. <laughs> you know? This was one of those films that made me great at math. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, so if this film is an hour and 11, two hours and 11 minutes, and yeah. I've watched it for... 84 minutes, how much time do I have left? Okay, let's do the math here. You know? Yeah. But became great at math. Yes. <laughs> Basically. Fucking horrible. Goddamn. I'm, 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 I'm just happy that it's over, basically. And just praying happy. your Wi-Fi connection doesn't go out. No, that's the worst part is is I had it on my phone. I could watch it whenever I wanted. There was no excuse. Yes. But let's talk about what we won't be doing this week, okay? What won't we be doing? Usually, I would tell the story of the creation of the film and the story of the film's director or the story of the film's star. Yes. I could write. I could write an interesting story about Adam Sandler and his rise from a young stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. a teenager in New York, to his uh, time on MTV's Remote Control, to yeah. Saturday Night Live, to Hollywood, and finally to Netflix. And I could make it interesting, very interesting. Or I could just say, fuck Adam Sandler and move on. And that is what I will be doing. Yes, good. Fuck Adam Sandler, move on. Also, That, that bitch doesn't, doesn't need any attention from us. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah. Just the fact that he got a meme for getting the Netflix movies, he gets more than enough attention. Yeah. Also, I will not be doing a plot breakdown of this shitty-ass 
fucking movie. The shitty does the what shitty ass plot? movie does not deserve that much time and effort. I will not put that much time and effort into a fucking Adam Sandler movie. So what I'm saying is this 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 episode might not be that long. Okay. But fuck Adam Sandler. Here's a question, though. Here's a question, though. I was really yes. trying to think about this. I was trying to think about this as seriously as I possibly could, and I couldn't really give an answer to this. But here's the question, okay? Uh-huh. Was Adam Sandler ever that good? I, I, Me, personally, I, I don't remember him on remote control. But if I guess there was any point in his career, that's how far back I would have to go to be able to say maybe I liked him at one point. I just because I love that show. I fucking love that. Yeah, but uh, and, I, I I hated him on Saturday Night Live. He might have been the reason I stopped watching Saturday Night Live. Who else was there at that time? I forget. Whatever. Fucking uh, Opera Man. Really. Opera Man, Opera Cage, Man and Cajun Man. Man. The the only skit that I can remember really loving him in. I remember at first I really liked the Hanukkah song, but then you heard that everywhere, every Hanukkah, like a yes. bajillion times. Like you would this hear is that. the only thing. one. Yeah. But the one thing that I ever remembered liking of his was the skit he did with Alec Baldwin, where Alec Baldwin mm -hmm. was the, the, the Cub Scout leader that was trying to fuck Adam Sandler. Yes, I remember that. That was good. And I do have one that I've mentioned before. Schlitz Gay. Oh, yeah. Schlitz Gay. I love Which I, I've looked for all over and I haven't found it. I have found it, but originally they had like a like a David Lee Roth Van Halen song in yeah. the background. And now if you find the commercial for Schlitz Gay, it has like a generic sound alike in the background that doesn't fully. No, not, yeah, that's that song yeah. made it. Yeah, yeah, it's just not the fucking same. And, well, you know, it's all choreographed to the song, too, so how, yeah. you, you can't really do that. Yeah. Liz could uh, do it for us, because she's a genius that way. Yeah. Agreed. But, um, like, going back on all of his movies, or the movies that I remember seeing, like, in retrospect... I remember liking Adam Sandler a lot, mm -hmm. but I was like a freshman in high school. Like it, it was impossible at that time for me to really hate anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I could see that. Like I loved Adam Sandler. I remember liking the water boy when it came out, but like, it's not a goddamn classic. Mm hmm. I remember loving Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, but I was, again, I was in fucking high school. I I, ha I haven't bothered seeing those films this freaking century. I, I I have no memory of watching an Adam Sandler movie, but I am pretty sure I mentioned I watched the ones that you've just mentioned. Yeah, in the time period where he was considered good. I remember The Wedding Singer being okay. Yeah. I remember the soundtrack being good. I, re I 50 first 50 first dates is creepy as shit and I don't fucking like it. Yeah, that sounded fucked up. Because oh, Adam Sandler's in love with this woman, but this woman keeps reliving the same day over and over again, so Adam Sandler can't fall in love with this woman. Wait, I'm going to I'm just going to torture her every day of her life. Yes. Into remembering the worst part of her life i'm gonna have her remember the worst part of her life over and over again every day i'm gonna break yeah. her heart every fucking day so i can be with wait her. do That's you mean do you mean adam. something other than the day she met adam sandler yeah she's lucky in that she keeps forgetting that she met adam sandler and i'm having a hard time thinking what might be worse <laughs> Mr. Deeds, I have vague memories of being meh, and goddamn little Nikki is an unforgivable crime. <laughs> I remember seeing little Nikki the day it came out in theaters, and I remember sitting there and going, wait a sec, like that was the one Adam Sandler movie where he is starting to reference 
other Adam Sandler movies. And I oh remember, even though I was young, I remember sitting there going, wait, Adam Sandler, you haven't fucking earned this yet. No. Okay? You haven't earned referencing your other films. This is like your fourth fucking film. <laughs> You know, well, but Kevin Smith did it right out of the box, and we loved it. Yeah. Fuck little Nicky. Fuck, fuck little Nicky. That's a horrible fucking movie. But, okay. Yes. But, but I have one good thing to say about Adam Sandler. Okay. And I really thought about this. I thought about this a lot, and this is one good thing. That I can say about Adam Sandler right now. Okay. And I'm kind of proud at the fact that I have come to this conclusion. So I have a little story, a little story time here. Okay. Yeah. I will give Adam Sandler credit because when you really think about it, this new deal that he has with Netflix is probably the smartest thing that he's ever freaking done. Yes. Because yeah. really, seriously, now think we're about fucking it. Stuck Adam with him. Sandler has his own production company and he's making movies and he's releasing all of these movies and they're bombing in theaters. Mm -hmm. They're bombing in theaters. They're not making money anymore. Adam Sandler is still a name. Yes. He is still a person and people know and love him, but people are not spending money and going to a theater to see him dress silly and doing the same stupid voice over and over again in a new movie that's exactly the same as all of his other fucking movies. So he is still a name, but he's making all these movies and nobody is spending money on him. He can't get a movie started. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Netflix has started the ongoing streaming content war and Netflix's strategy has obviously been quantity over quality. Netflix is literally just throwing shit against the wall and hoping that something sticks. Yeah, with all the original, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not like we are only going to have the finest things as a Netflix original. No, it's just we need as much as we can get. So whatever, just come on in, guys. We need shit. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So, a failing Adam Sandler signs up for Netflix to do a series of films directly for Netflix, and it's the smartest goddamn move. Um, because uh, Netflix is a prominent player in the streaming content war. They just want content. They don't necessarily care about the quality of said content. Case in point, Fuller House, The Ranch, yeah. uh, Adam Sandler's The Do-Over. It's a smart business move because Netflix get to say, hey, we've got a name like Adam Sandler in our stable. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Is it, 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 are his movies any good? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, look, we've got Adam Sandler. <laughs> and then Adam Sandler can now get projects off the ground in Hollywood mm -hmm. where he has complete creative control. Oh. Whatever the fuck he wants with his goddamn Netflix contract. Basically, and this is what he's doing? Yeah, basically Netflix is giving him blank checks to do whatever the fuck he wants to do, which is why he made a two hour and 10 minute uh, salute to the golden age of Hollywood about his real life talent manager named Sandy. Like no Hollywood studio, whatever bankroll this fucking movie. Yeah. If they did, they'd cut out 50 minutes of the fucking thing. But he gets to release this film, two hour and 15 minute long atrocity. And he doesn't have to worry about how many people have seen it. He doesn't have to worry about box office. He doesn't have to worry about numbers. Netflix doesn't give out that shit. And, and, he can do whatever and, he wants. Yeah. You know, so like, holy shit, Adam Sandler, fucking golf clap. This is the smartest thing you could have done. Yes. You know? Yes. You get to basically make whatever fucking movies you want now. This this movie had to have rung a bell for cameos. Oh, hell yeah. This movie had to beat out like a mad, 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 mad world with cameos. Um, Let me see if I can find the... And just about every cameo, there were a couple I didn't mind, but just about every cameo, it was like, 
I blocked out your name for a fucking reason. Yeah. You know, never thought this zombie would come back. Okay. I'm going to try this, okay? Okay. The film features Jennifer Hudson, Kevin James, Terry Crews, Rob Schneider, Colin Quinn, Nick Swarsden, Arsenio Hall, Aaron Neville for no fucking reason. Yeah, what was up with that? Uh, Jane Seymour is like a horny ass chick. Like I thought she was doing better, but then like you see Jane Seymour in this, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe you're not. But <laughs> on Wikipedia, it says that Louise Guzman played Oscar, but I don't remember seeing Louise Guzman in this fucking movie. And who the hell is Oscar? I have no idea who the fuck that is. Uh, Rob Reiner, Chris Elliott, Milo Ventimiglia, whatever. Chris the f- Elliott. Chris How Elliott. far back do we have to go to find a place in history where Chris Elliott was was relevant? I never. Liked, How long was the second scary movie? I never liked Cabin Boy. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I never fucking liked Cabin Boy. Yeah. The only thing about the movie Cabin Boy that I like is David Letterman's like two minute scene. <laughs> you want to buy a monkey? <laughs> hey, you're one of them. I'm not fans. sure if I've seen it. I might have blocked it out of my mind too. Milo Ventimiglia's in Sandy Wexler. He's a uh, fucking uh, what's his name? Jess. Fucking Jess is in this <laughs> from from fucking Gilmore Girls. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish, Jason Priestley from 90210, fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, 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 Baba Booey's in this. Yes. Quincy I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Quincy Jones, Judd Apatow, Janine Garofalo, Polly Shore, Kevin Nealon, Lauren Michaels, Dana Carvey, Chris Rock, David Spade, George Wett. Like, why are you fucking in this? Mm-hmm. Pench. Henry Winkler, uh, I'll be sure. Vanilla. Henry I'll Winkler was the only one while watching the movie I gave the, I gave a pass to because yeah. he's fucking Fonzie. I, I'm sorry, he could do whatever he wants. That's yeah. it. He's just Fonzie. He it it. I, I don't care what you say. You're Fonzie. I don't care what you call yourself. You're Fonzie. And yeah. and my generation, we get erect when we see Fonzie. Yeah. Yeah. No. Understandable. Understandable. I met him once. He is insanely hyperactive. Yeah. Henry Winkler is an insanely hyperactive man. Yeah. I always and very short related story. Yeah. Uh, I remember Henry Winkler doing talk shows way back in the day because he was everywhere. He was Fonzie. And he had said that how much he was not Fonzie, you know? Yeah. And he was like, I was terrified the first time I had to ride the motorcycle. And every time I watched Happy Days after that, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. I can see how terrified. He's smiling. His face looks fine. But he, this is where we, he was wearing the blue jacket, the like windbreakery thing when Happy Days first came, the the first episodes and he's riding into Arnold's on his motorcycle and he lifts his hands up to wave at everybody. And I could see how high that hand did not get (laughs) and how quick and uncomfortable the wave was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're terrified. I can see it now, but Fonzie Fonzie can be in whatever movie he wants to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. Everybody else, fuck you. Henry Winkler had a series of kids' books called uh, Hank Zipser. <laughs> the Hank Zipser series. And there were these kids' books that were loosely based on his own childhood because apparently uh, Henry Winkler grew up with like some severe learning disabilities and he had uh, uh, and, and shit. Yeah. So he had a really hard time getting through school and he was always getting in trouble and getting bad grades. And so he wrote a book series about it and kids just loved it. And especially parents because parents were like, hey, my kid is dyslexic and my kid has a hard time in school. Do you have any books? And I'm like, yes, I've got these books and they're really good 
good and they're really they're really funny and they really do a great job of helping uh, kids who are having a hard time at school. And I haven't even mentioned the best part. Fonzie wrote these. <laughs> So I would always keep a ton of them in the children's department. And then one day, my store in California was uh, two blocks away from the California State Fairgrounds where they were having a car show. And Henry Winkler was there signing his kids' books. But so many kids showed up that they ran out of books. So they called my store and said, hi, this is Henry Winkler. I'm looking for my – if you have any copies of my oh. Zipster series. And I said, ah. I've got a shit ton. I've got a shit ton of your books. People buy the crap out of that. So 10 minutes later, he was in my store with his fucking handler. And he was just so like he shook my hand. You're the person who keeps all of my books in stock. Thank you so much. I can't believe it that you have so many copies of my books because we just ran out. And thank you so much. What's your name, Steve? That's great. That's great. You're a wonderful person. Thank you. Let me hug you. Okay, I'm going to go buy these. And it's like. Holy shit, I just got hit by Hurricane Fonzie. <laughs> like, that was 30 seconds, and you said like eight paragraphs. Like, are you on something? Because that was insane. Yeah. So, yeah, I met Henry Winkler. He's an insane man. He's an insane, hyperactive ball of something. Well, I'm I'm just thinking that that now, and maybe not right now, but just something to keep in your hip pocket. You know? Yeah. We can get in touch with Henry and you can just be like, Remember I helped you out with those books, right? Well, he wouldn't remember he wouldn't remember me if he you, No way. No way he'd remember you owe me. me now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time to pay up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's see who else is in this. Tony Orlando, I'll be sure. Brian I didn't Mc even see him. He must have gone yeah. by so quick. Yeah. Uh, Vanilla Ice, Jimmy Kimmel. I'm like, Jimmy Kimmel's in this? Fuck Jimmy Kimmel. I fucking hate Jimmy Kimmel. And then his uh, kid had to be born with like a birth defect. And I'm like, oh, yeah. God damn it. God damn it. Don't make me like you, Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you. Fucking like, how dare you try and make me fucking. I'm not breaking my heart for you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, let's see. Conan O'Brien, Jay Leno. Fuck Jay Leno. God, fuck Jay Leno. I'm so happy that I got to live past Jay Leno's TV career. See, now, well, yes. And that's why it also made me happy to see Jay Leno in this. Yeah. Look around, Jay. You're with a pack of fucking losers. Yeah. You're a loser, Jay. You're a loser. Yeah. Uh, wow, what a surprise. Uh, I, I'm so absolutely surprised that Jay Leno didn't do any scenes with Conan O'Brien. <laughs> huh? It's almost as if they filmed them separately. Huh. Yes. Do that. That's weird. Uh, uh huh. Quite interesting there. And a day or two apart, but that's just how the scheduling worked out. You uh, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Louis Anderson. I never needed to see him again, ever. Oh, and he's sitting down, and it's like, oh, yeah, just stay sitting. I don't know if you can stand anymore. <laughs> Someone have his rascal handy. Yeah. Uh, Babyface, Maze, John Lovitz, Bud Friedman, Lisa Loeb. Good God. Uh, I think that's all of the cameos. Still don't believe that fucking uh, Luis Guzman is in this. And then here's the part that pissed me off. Here's the part that pisses me off. So um, one of Adam Sandler's clients is like this mom and she's going to do a commercial or uh, an audition or something. So uh, Sandy Wexler has to take care of her two kids. And when you see them at Six Flags Magic Mountain and they're walking and talking, it's at that point that I'm like, that's his fucking kids, isn't it? Yes, they were in the credits. I saw them in, in the wait. No. Oh, no. I went to look up Jane Seymour because I was like, that is not Jane Seymour. And I had to IMDb. And that yeah. made me cry. 
And then I was just rolling through the rest of the credits, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah, because that's his fucking kids. These are all and, his kids." Yeah, and that was even his fucking wife too. Oh my lord! And I'm like, "Oh god damn it! Fuck you, Adam Sandler! Fuck you! <laughs> so fucking hard." Um. So there's a lot to hate about this film. Yeah. Uh, I hate Adam Sandler's comedic instincts. Yes. Does he have like the them? Scene, the scene where um the 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 woman is recording her demo. Yes. That scene went on like 10 minutes longer than it had to. We get it. He keeps not pressing record. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Like, like, literally, stop dragging the punchline that we all fucking see coming. We get what you're doing. <laughs> Just fucking cut it. Just stop. Mm. You know. Um. It, plus, he has that one silly voice. Adam Sandler has one silly voice. He does that in more than this because that was driving me up the fucking wall. Yeah. He has just he has one specific voice that he thinks is funny that uh nudie magazine day oh dippity do and he just gets that one fucking voice and he does it or he does a variation of it in every fucking movie he's ever done. <sighs> like and like I like you look back at all of his other movies and you look back at like Billy Madison and he's waiting on, for the bus to show up for school and he's there. Oh, Oh, a back to school, and it's like okay, he's doing the same voice, and Little Nicky's the same thing, except crazy higher. And then, like, it's the same stupid fucking voice. And this movie is a prime example. This voice is Little Nicky, is Happy Gilmore, is Billy Madison, is yada 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 yada. Like, stop. It's doing annoying. It. That's yeah. what it is. It's Just stop annoying. doing this fucking voice. And, and he, here's another critique of this film. And this is interesting. This is odd because yep. this critique that I have of this film could easily be about literally every other Adam Sandler movie. Okay. Literally every movie that Adam Sandler does has this exact same fucking critique, but I uh, but but here it is, okay? Okay. <laughs> This young, talented, attractive, smart woman would not fall for Adam Sandler's dumb fucking ass. Yes. That is in regards to this film, Sandy Wexler. But interestingly enough, you could just airlift that complaint and drop it into <laughs> any fucking Adam Sandler movie because he has a history of making films where fairly hot, attractive, talented chicks fall for his dumb fucking ass. And that's goddamn ridiculous. Yes. I also hate how when the boss is on vacation, it's nearly impossible to get any one of the people I work with to shelve the goddamn H cards. <laughs> Sorry that's work related, but I, I, I was on a complaining just streak. Yeah. And stop leaving junk in my receiving area. If you're going to leave a big pile of books or magazines or shit, at least respect me enough to tell me what the fuck you're leaving. Yes. I, don't, I shouldn't have to wait like a day until someone comes in and says, oh, I'm sorry I left this here. It, it, this is actually a pile of blank. And it's like, okay, great. You couldn't leave me a fucking note? I got <laughs> goddamn post-it notes up the ass. Mm-hmm. And I hate slash love the fairly big-time celebrities because you say that there's a lot of like washed-up cameos in here. But, but, but – there were also some fairly okay people who were obviously like roped against their will to be in this film. And, and none of these people want to be in Sandy Wexler. Literally, if you look, if you pause the film, uh-huh. Conan O'Brien is going to gnaw his own foot off. <laughs> like honestly and sincerely, at any second that Conan O'Brien is on, he's looking at the exits. <laughs> And plotting his escape. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, everybody remembers Sandy. Okay, now if I knock out that guy, yeah, I can use George Wen as a human shield. <laughs> or maybe if I just rip my arm off, I can say, oh, no, I'm bleeding. Get me onto an ambulance to 
Get me off of this set, please. I think that would be risky. I think that would be a risky maneuver. But you look in his eyes, he wants to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because Brian has sad eyes. Sad, sad eyes. I think this, the George, George Wentz thing and making a break for it is, is better of the options. You can see in Conan O'Brien's eyes the same sadness that are in the eyes of everyone who was in the first Birdemic movie. <laughs> it's the same eyes of, oh, shit, what am I doing in this film? God, I hope no one ever watches this. But see, see, see. If, but if you look in George Wentz, and not even George Wentz's eyes, George Wentz's whole face, he knows exactly why he's there. And oh, it's, yeah. And yeah. it's killing him. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You look at George Wentz. If you look at George Wentz's face, and George Wentz is like, "Well, I'm at least at least I'm here with Conan." <laughs> hey, hey, good buddy. We're two good buddies, pals, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe we should work on some other films. And then Conan's like, what if I tunneled out of here? <laughs> like, there's a lot of spoons here for this fake uh, this fake reception. If I just spoon out of here, I'm going to go to Judd Apatow on the other side of the room and see if he has a poster of Rita Hayworth. Yeah. I can just use that to cover the hole that I dig to escape. Mm -hmm. And later upgrade it to Linda Ronstadt, of course. Yeah. But George went, come on. Apparently it didn't happen, or maybe it didn't. We just didn't hear about it. He looked like he was going to walk off set and immediately put a gun in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Rikishi is alive. I couldn't believe (laughs) Couldn't believe that. I'm like, really? Rikishi's alive? I just assumed he was dead. And you can really assume that about so many wrestlers. Yes. You can assume that about so many wrestlers. Because so many wrestlers die that, like, oh, did you hear about Sid Vicious? Yeah, Yeah. he's dead. Or at least I'm assuming he is. And there's probably a 75% chance I'm right about this. (laughs) Honestly, I don't know if he's alive or dead. But there's a good chance I'm right. Yeah. Oh yeah, did you hear about did you hear about the Road Warriors? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they both mm-hmm. died. Yeah. Or or I assume they did. Yeah. Because they're wrestlers. So I thought for sure that just Rikishi just just bit it, because not only is he a wrestler, but also he's just got the huge. Yes. He's just got the huge. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people just die a huge. That's what Andre the Giant died of. He died yes. of he died so of being huge. Who yeah. is it these days? I saw somebody recently who I'm I'm sure is gonna die of the huge. Oh man. Somebody out there in the wild right now. Not sure. Forget it. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um that's pretty much all that I have for this week's episode it, this would be a longer episode if I did a, a plot summary but I'm not doing that for fucking Sandy Wexer no. because no I don't hate myself that much but I would like to end I would like to end this episode the way I would like to end every episode nowadays which is by talking about the morals of uh, the moral of this movie the moral of Sandy Wexer and I gotta say there are a lot of good morals to this week's film yeah for example One moral of Adam Sandler's new movie is that Netflix, uh, the phrase Netflix original is not a sign of quality. No, you can't. You can't say, oh, this is a Netflix original. Then it has to be good. (laughs) You're you're not there yet. No, you are not. Um, No, you are not. This is definitely a case of fool me once. Shame on you. And we won't be fooled again. Yeah. I'm surprised that Adam Sandler hasn't made a movie yeah. with Mick Foley. That would break my heart. You no, know, it's just that uh, Mick Foley went to high school with Kevin James, and Kevin James is uh, constantly up Adam Sandler's ass. Yes. 
So I'm just surprised that that hasn't happened yet. I... Mick Foley got the the right brain damage from wrestling, you know? Yeah. And I I just think he... I think he could see through an asshole like Adam Sandler, and he just won't do it. He's like, I I don't have to put up with you. (laughs) I hope so. I remember that weird period of time after the Waterboy came out where people literally thought, oh, man, the big show is going to be the next Adam Sandler. Oh, God. The show. He's going to be the next breakout star. I've always hated the big show. Yeah. Interestingly enough, there used to be a, uh, a tag team in WWE called Crime Time. And yeah. it was two bad guys. It was uh, Shad Gaspar and his partner, JTG, and they were Crime Time. Yeah. And. And um, Shad Gaspar was the in-ring body double for Terry Crews' character. Terry Crews didn't do any of the wrestling. That was Shad Gaspar. So there were two old wrestlers you don't remember in this movie. <laughs> you count Kevin James. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so that's, that's good. Um so here's some more morals from Sandy Wexler. Adam Sandler is just done now. Uh, just... Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but but, but th- 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 there's Fifty Shades Grayer, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many yeah. Twilight movies were there? A lot. You know? That gives me pause. <laughs> Yeah. You shouldn't have paws because you're not a dog. No. Or a kitty cat, as far as I know. No. Um, some other morals to be derived from Sandy Wexler. Um, Conan O'Brien might have a prosthetic foot that we don't know about. <laughs> because he chewed his foot off. Yes. To get out of this film. That may have happened. We don't know. Well, when we're famous and we are on Conan O'Brien, we're going to have to stab him in the foot with a steak knife. Just to be sure. Yes. Just to be sure. There's no other way to do it. Mm-hmm. Lisa Loeb was in this movie. I, I. What has she done? In In, like, what? 30 years? Uh, She was in Hot Tub Time Machine 2. She also has her own uh, uh, eyeglasses company where she 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 uh, creates her own uh, uh, eyewear. (laughs) She also does uh, children's CDs now. Mainly she is now like children's musician Lisa Loeb. Really? Yeah. But a long time ago, she was on like um. Somebody finally reached out and grabbed that Raffi crown. Yeah, basically. Okay. So I heard her being interviewed on some radio show. It may have been Howard Stern back when he was still on the actual airwaves. Airwaves. Yeah. But we're interviewing her, and she had just broken up with somebody famous, and she just kept. She started concerning me because she said that, well, being in a relationship with someone, you know, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, you know, like a big sleepover. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, she kept saying that over and over again. She said that like five or six times. It got to the point where you started being concerned. (laughs) You know, I really want to be with someone that's just, you know, it's not it's not a chore. It's not difficult. It's fun, like a fun sleepover. You know, what I really am looking for is just someone to have a fun sleepover with, you know, fun sleepover. Like, oh, Jesus Christ, what happened in your childhood? She, she what you want is a fucking fun sleepover. I don't know what your back issue is dealing with, <laughs> but get some fucking therapy or at least some Paxil because you got issues. She's hit a programming loop. That's, you know. Yeah. The, the higher heuristics just keep kicking out the same phrase and she's just working it into different sentences. 
She's yeah. doing the best she can, you know. But this is science, damn it. Yeah. So anyway, anytime I see her now, I just keep thinking, oh, I wonder if she ever found that fun sleepover. Those are the two things I am always, always looking for. Well, looking out for in my life. Programming loops? Alien human hybrids. Yeah. And androids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. And a stupid marketing gimmick for a phone made the android hunting a lot harder. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very sad. But I, I, I'm, I'm very suspicious of Lisa Loeb now. Yeah, well. Does she, does she, like, look the same? Because androids don't really age. She, she pretty much looks the same. She pretty much looks the same. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah. Go. Hopefully, hopefully she's found her fun sleepover. Yes. Um, and another moral of the story, Rikishi is still alive, so that's good. Rikishi is still alive. Rikishi has a porn actress's ass. Somewhere in the world of porn, there is a woman who had her giant porn ass. Somebody bring a pizza? Yeah. Emerald. Stolen by a Polynesian wrestler. Yes, honey? You, we let haven't me, heard you this whole episode. So. Let me tell you the story, boys and girls. Okay. okay. And those non-binary folks out there. Is this going to be like a fun sleepover? <laughs> we, were, we were just talking about fun sleepovers. Supernatural. They have terrible writers. Okay. Buck Lemming is a fucking terror on society. Buck Lemming? Okay, it's two people, two writers, and one of the writers happens to be the show writer's wife, so they can't get rid of her, and they fuck shit up, they fuck continuity. Fuck continuity, what's that? Who cares, right? Because nobody cares. It's funny because I <sighs> saw, I actually saw but. fuck continuity open for Buck Lemming. <laughs> That was a great concert. Buck Lemming it is a Buck Cherry tribute band. <laughs> I don't talk to you anymore. No, keep talking. We haven't heard you this whole episode. You're a big part of the show. Yes. So keep talking about Buck Lemming. What did Buck Lemming do? Buck Lemming didn't write the episode. So enter new writer, Steve Yaki. Not only is he gay. Is he Native he, American, like a Yaki Indian? He's like, he's like half Asian. Oh, Filipino something. I don't know, because I don't ask, whatever. I don't fucking care what your race is. You're amazing. He's a great writer, and he has done wonderful things for Supernatural. Yeah, Natasha doesn't see race. That's why she keeps calling me Mr. Chang. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I call him asshole. He just doesn't want to admit that. Um, okay, so he does amazing things. The Yaki? The Yaki. The Yaki, okay. Okay. And tonight, where he broke my heart in a million pieces. Uh-oh. Androids? He killed off one of the witch twins. <gasps> he killed Alicia Baines. Okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. Sorry. He killed Alicia you, Baines. You, you, you. Max Baines evil because a twin can't exist without their other twin in the that's world of why, a team. That's why I'm really excited about um, uh, like, the WB <sighs> show Riverdale because they have one half gone, of the twins. By the way, you're missing yeah. it. They have one half of the twins, Cole and Dylan Sprouse, which means eventually there's going to be an evil Jughead. They can't not do that. So, <laughs> they killed the twins' mother, Tasha Baines. Yeah. And when Alicia called Winchesters for help, Max, totally bisexual, by the way, he was this, like, okay. silent over Sam, their first episode. And then this episode, he was about to go out on a date with the guy from the vegan place. Well, from the vegan <laughs> when he found Sam and Dean with their mother's body. Anyway, so yes, oh, oh, they killed. I was, oh, I was, I, I, I couldn't help but laugh that when you said that line that he was going out with another guy from the vegan place. For some reason, there was absolutely nothing about that line that surprised me at all. Well, he's not the vegan. His mom is, and his mom ordered the vegan stuff, but it yeah. wasn't his mom, even though his mom is. Anyways, that's not important. His mom is the one that ordered the vegan stuff. 
they went and interviewed the people from the vegan place because their mom is vegan, and that's where they found out she was staying. Anyway, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. But my point is, I trusted Steve Yockey <clears throat> to write an episode that wasn't going to completely break my heart. Yeah. He's done it in the past. So every time he writes, I'm like, yes, I love you. He even mm-hmm. has, you know what this man has? This man has written something that, uh, I think a, a book, was it Yaki? I think it's Yaki that has written gay fiction that has become a musical. Okay. There's tentacles involved. Let's just. <laughs> let's. Now you sold it. <laughs> okay. And he killed off Alicia Baines. Yeah. I I want to write him a letter and cry because why did he have to kill her? Mm. Why? Was that necessary to the plot? It might come in handy in you, season 13, but considering that they are like literally, what, two episodes away from the finale? I was just about to ask you how close you were to the finale. The 18th. The 18th is the finale. God. And You're so... scream so much. People are going to die. I've already read the spoiler. It was like, oh yeah, no, motherfuckers are going to die. You, you you do realize that you're getting close to misery territory here, right? Oh my god, you're going to break somebody's legs. <laughs> Honey, no. Like, I have the whole separation between characters and actors thing. Like That like, other supernatural fans do not yes, have. Yes, like, there are so many people out there who hate the character Castiel, the angel. My angel. My, I love him so much. <laughs> They hate him, but that hate bleeds over to I hate Misha Collins, the okay. actor who plays Castiel. And I'm like, bitches, calm the fuck down. Misha and Cass are two different entities. One's fictional yeah. and one's reality. That is one thing that I have read mm-hmm. repeatedly about Supernatural fans is that Supernatural fans have a hard time separating the character from the actor who plays. <sighs> they are crazy no i'm gonna tell i am a supernatural fan and i am here to tell you supernatural (laughs) fans are fucking crazy (laughs) hate misha collins like not everybody but the people who are they're called the bybros they hate misha collins with a they're called the what i it's it will take too long to explain everything they're called the bybros okay because there are people who believe hold on they're people who believe that the story should revolve only around Sam and Dean and only Sam and Dean. And Cass was never even a thing. He should not have been introduced, even though it was admitted by the writers, by the showrunners, by the creators that Cass saved the show. Like yeah. they wouldn't be going into season 13 if they hadn't introduced Cass in season four. Season okay. four. And people are like, oh, no, it's been Sam and Dean for three seasons. Why do we need Cass? Fuck Cass. So those are the people who hate Cass. And usually that leads over to hating Misha because they're like, oh, Misha is doing queer baiting. Yes, okay. she does. The whole but show also, does. The whole goddamn show does queer baiting. No, we're talking about actors, though. But not only does Misha Collins do the queer baiting when it comes to the whole Dean and Cass thing, but Jared Padalecki does as well. But you don't True. hear them talking about that. Yeah, like seriously, at conventions, con- I was going to call them cons, and I fucked it up. Conventions, um, Jared will literally put uh, Jensen and Misha together. There's so many videos and pictures and gifts of Jared putting Misha's arm around Jensen or Jensen's arm around Misha and like putting them together and making comments and jokes. Yeah. But yet, you don't see them talking out about Jared. Mm-hmm. But they're doing the queer baiting. You know why? Because they are vibra. I, let's not get into that. Anyway. <laughs> I'm so glad you are here because I did not have a lot about this week's movie. So what you're doing right now is really helping uh, 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 stretch out the show. So thank you. Well, like, I'm, okay. I'm, and I'm serious about that. Just, just FYI. That's I'm great. not being. And I will continue talking. Okay. All right. So <laughs> what was I going to say? I, we I try not to about, get into okay. the the whole fandom hate because just like my haircut, I don't know if Steve told you about my haircut. I did not. No. Uh, haircut. Um, it's not what I wanted. 
I hated it for about 24 to 48 hours because it's so short. It you were going to buy, you were going to buy a fucking wig. I was going to buy a wig and I was going to live with a hat on my head. I gave up on that because I gave up on hating things a long time ago. Okay. I spent too many years of my life hating my niece's mother and it's not worth my time or my energy. So okay. I'm going to love that lot. So that's my philosophy about hate. It's not worth my time. That's also a good philosophy about our marriage. <laughs> it's not worth my time? No, no, it's it's just, it's like, no, oh, I was going to hate it, but eh, I'll love what I have. <laughs> Can you go feed the baby some of my pizza and get out of my face, you asshole? You don't know how to wrap up the podcast. I'm not wrapping up the podcast. Okay. I'm going to talk for 20 more minutes about Supernatural, because okay. that's what I do, asshole. <laughs> See? Okay. Okay. So, here's the thing. There is a whole side of supernatural fandom. They just hate and they hate. Okay. It's like this whole entity on its own, I swear. And one of my posts about last week's episode got um, hijacked. It got hijacked by a bi bro, and she happens to have a lot of followers who will hate on and attack people who don't believe the same thing. Okay. I, I'm of the belief, live and let live, ship and let ship. You know, if you don't like it, pass it on. You don't give a fuck. I'm going to keep looking because I don't, that doesn't interest me. I'll keep right. scrolling. I don't need to bother with it. It's not my interest. Like, you don't like fishing. You're not going to go hate on fishing, are you? Right. You might like fishing. I'm sorry. Do you like fishing? Do I like fishing? I do not. Okay, so you're not going to go hate on fishing, though, right? No. Like, you're not go out and seek out fishermen and things about fishing and then shit on them, right? Depends on where they're standing. <laughs> in general. Just but that's general. not particularly fishermen. You know, that could be anybody. But like something that you don't care for, you're not going to seek it out to hate on it, right? Like uh, if I'm in a balcony, you know, things like that. That's no, a no, I'm not going to go. No, no, yeah. And I... And, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and and like Dumbledore dies on page whatever. I hate that shit. What's what's your problem? I, yeah, so I'm not going to go out of my way and search the tags that I know I don't like. Yeah, and reblog with hate because this is the thing. Last week's episode, and I know this is going to be nothing to you, but it will for anybody out there listening who might watch Supernatural and also might ship Dean and Cass. But okay. Dean made Cass a mixtape. He made him a mixtape. <laughs> me to you making a mixtape. Oh, well, well, that was always a very romantic thing to do. Exactly. Yes. In the age of digital media, why would you go out of your way to make a mixtape on a cassette tape? Yes. Unless you wanted to put the effort in to make sure somebody understood, this is the effort I'm putting in to let you know my feelings. Yes. Now, Dean has and 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 we saw the effectiveness of a good mixtape in Grindhouse. See, and Steve brought up high fidelity. He was like, "Well, high fidelity, you know, mixtapes were given among friends." I said, "Yes," but he, I mean, like he narrated the whole fucking movie about his life with mixtapes and romantic interludes. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> no matter the mixtape significance with communication, with friendship, with love, whether it be platonic or familial, their mixtape means something. Yes. It can communicate something. So my post, had, I reblogged something, and then one of my friends, Claire, she commented on it. And so I replied. I said, yes, this, this episode was completely, like, ridiculously heavy with the relationship between Dean and Cass. So that person mm -hmm. reblogged with nothing but a GIF, which doesn't show unless you click on it. And it was Jensen Ackles at a convention saying that um, the ship does not exist. And then in the, in the tags, which you can't see unless you click, is uh, that we were delusional and are we watching the same show? But <laughs> that I have asked whether they watch Supernatural or not about a mixtape, they always say it has romantic suggestions yeah. to it. 
So I don't know how people can hate on that. And I don't know why, why they're still fucking around with that. But I was mad and I blocked that person. It was the first person I ever blocked. Ah. Tumblr. Because I don't need that hate and that negativity. And I know that person has a million freaking, well, probably not a million, but I don't know how many followers, but they all flock to her. And they're like, oh, yes, we hate Misha and we hate Cass. So let's. And so I blocked every single one of them. Everybody that I saw that followed her, I blocked them. That's just weird. <laughs> like, how can you see a mixtape and not think romance? I. How can you how can you hate that deeply for a it's, fictional it's, character? That's my point. Like, why don't you, if you love this show, spend the time that you have enjoying the show and the pieces of the show that you love instead yeah. of taking the the time that you have and investing it in hatred. Like, how is that benefiting you? How is yeah. that benefiting? anybody it's well, not it, it reminds me of the hatred for wesley crusher back a, a million years ago oh you know oh, it's like it's i mean a fucking asshole. tv show but i wasn't gonna be like fuck wesley <laughs> will beaton is a wonderful person and so is his wife yeah. like she wasn't hating on wesley i thought he was a little asshole but you know I didn't like mention it to everybody. I, I, I follow him now, by the way. You follow? I follow him too. Isn't he a wonderful person? Like, he is. I follow his wife, and she's fantastic. She is so pretty. I she shows she posts pictures. Yeah. From like twenty years ago, and I'm like, bitch, you haven't changed a bit. What the hell? Well, he's he's also had a lot to say about depression and things like that that I kind of really appreciate. You know. But I also uh, follow Bill Moomy too. So Follow who? Bill Moomy. I don't know him. Lost in Space. <gasps> oh! 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 The really? Wesley Crusher of his day. <laughs> wow. wow. See, I don't I don't get on To every generation there is a Wesley Crusher. You know, that's that's true. Mm -hmm. I wonder what like Emerald's generation's Wesley Crusher is, though. I I'm sure there is one, though. There has to be, right? Mm hmm. Huh. Someone around her age. Hey, Emerald! I don't know if she'll know who Wesley Crusher is, though. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm totally one of those kids who's brought up on Star Trek and, well, Star Trek for my dad, Star Wars for my brother. Hey, can you get Emerald? We're trying to figure out who Wesley Crusher is in her age. Uh, sure. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Steve just came back and confused shit. Well, just just like there has always been the singer or the band that was the band, like it was like Glenn Don't Miller, Elvis, you know. No, see, I don't know how, but my life, I don't think I had a band that defined a generation because yeah. mine's still the Beatles, even you, though I wasn't born in that generation. No, stop, come here, come here, come here, come here. Well, you but know? they are still a band that defined a generation. They they don't go away. I need to know something, Emerald. Mm. I don't think we have one. No, we'll wait. Yes, we understand that. Okay, Wesley Crusher was a character on Star Trek. Everybody hated on him. You have to have your own Wesley Crusher on a show, on a YouTube channel, on a something. Somebody that you hate. Somebody. That everybody, that everybody your age hates? That everybody your age hates. Like somebody around your age. What was that, Amber? Hold on. Amber's chime in. Come here, please, so I can hear you better. Jacob Sartorius, which is true. Jacob, who? That Jacob Sartorius. Oh, Jacob Sartorius. Is that the one with the sweater? sweater? The sweater song. The yes. sweater song. The sweater song. Okay. Nice pull. That's yes. So I can I see it. Emerald says that not everybody hates him, though. Well, again, nobody, not everybody I, hated I, Wesley Crusher, and not everybody hated Billy Mooney. Emerald is now saying Nash Greer. I don't know who that is, which shows my age, but apparently everybody fucking hates him, and that is Emerald's quote. I I would 
I would hypothesize that this would have to be a, a teenager of some sort, you know, give or take, you know, let's say, let's say anywhere between 10 and 15, somewhere in that range. What is he known for? Vines. He's known for vines, apparently. And vine doesn't even exist. Anymore. And since the vine is gone, I mean, the videos are still around because it's the internet and you can't erase anything. Yeah. So I'm just, you can still find it, but Emerald says late teens and he's an asshole. That's what Emerald is telling me. I don't know. But that is this generation's uh, crusher, Wesley Crusher. I, I am glad that we found him. Wait, who? Now Emerald's, we can tag him and track him. doesn't know who Wesley Crusher is, so Emerald can suck it. Go out of my room, you heathen. Amber doesn't know who Wesley Crusher is either. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I came in here originally to go piss, so I'm going to give you back to Steve, and I'm going to use the bathroom. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, Bella's watching Riverdale, and there was just the most ridiculous twist. In yeah. The kiss twist. Supernatural to Wesley Crusher. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to podcasting. That's my life. Yeah, w- welcome, welcome to podcasting. Well, it was it was because of discussing uh, the irrational hatred for fictional characters. Yeah, no, that's understandable. Hey, honey, you know who was in uh, this week's movie, Sandy Wexler? Shad Gaspar, one half of the former tag team Crime Time. Remember the two black guys that they made all thuggish and they were a tag team in WWE? Yes. Crime Time. Yeah, one of them's dead. The one that's alive was in uh, Sandy Wexler. She's going to freak the fuck out. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so that was fun. Thanks, Natasha, for uh, stretching out this episode to an acceptable length. You really helped out there, yeah. And, and Bella's now watching Riverdale, and there was there's some there's a crazy twist that these two people who are in love is now is like they didn't realize that they were related, and now one of them's having a baby, and so Bella's like, "Daddy, is it illegal to?" marry a relative and I'm like okay we're getting into a weird area here and it's this is based on Archie fucking comics <laughs> god damn it so pissed off I'm gonna do like a gritty I'm gonna do a gritty Mom. reboot Heathcliff the cat Heathcliff yeah Heathcliff <laughs> Heathcliff the cat except he's on drugs yeah we could probably get Taylor Lautner to play Heathcliff. He's not he's not doing too well. <laughs> but anyway, that's all um, that I've got for this week. Next week, we're going to be doing This is Spinal Tap. It's on uh, Netflix right now. And interestingly enough, the uh, Bloomberg Business Week uh, is the homework for next week. The article is called let me pull it up again disney's intergalactic theme park quest to beat harry potter can avatar oh and it's Star- a, it's actually an article and not a video this time no it's an actual article it's an actual yeah, we we've done an article we did the, did the one on starship yeah the article yeah this, yeah this is a full length article uh can avatar and star wars attractions steal back the magic from universal's wizardly worlds Interestingly enough, in that same issue of Bloomberg Business Week, there is an interesting article that we're also going to be talking about, but you don't have to read this one. This one I accidentally stumbled onto. Yeah. Uh, in 33 years, the creators of the cult classic, This Is Final Tap, have been paid almost nothing. Yes. The rock gods are angry. The article is called, uh, This Lawsuit Goes to Eleven. So uh, some timely stuff there about Spinal Tap. So we're getting into some real, a real timely uh, Spinal Tap discussion. We're going to be talking about Spinal Tap and its history and its fucking lawsuits. 
I also uh, have already started writing next week's episode. We're going to be talking about the Beatles in in a, a discussion that I'm really excited to do. There's a new TV show that exists on Netflix that people don't know about that they need to know about. So we're going to be teaching people about that. Ooh. We're also talking about Maine. Maine is going through a uh, massive health crisis, and I think I figured out a solution. Oh, good. So that's going to be a good episode. That's next week, episode 124. And uh, this week, I think this has been a good episode. This and has this been a good episode. It has been. It has been a good episode. It has been. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And for... Um, for Maxwell and Natasha and Emerald and Amber and Eleanor's yelling and everybody else in the house, I just want to say thank you for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Do 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 and you shuffles the poopy tuts goodbye. Uh, thank you, Bella, for uh, chiming in. What's mommy yelling about? You know what? I'm good. Never mind. I'll take that back. Do 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 do. Cut and print. <laughs>